and welcome to the 2020-2021 A Random Hello Teacher Planner Walkthrough. Today I'm going to be going through all of the different parts of this planner and the different files that will be included in the documents. You can purchase this planner on Teachers Pay Teachers for $10 and I'll include the links for all of those things down below. I'll also include links for any of the, the supplies that I use to create this, whether it's the rings, the cover, the tabs, all of those things I'll include in the link down below as well. If you are curious about how I put this together, I don't have a video for this year just because of some technical difficulties, but you can watch my previous videos at the iCard up there. I have two different videos. I have one for actually putting each little piece together and I have another video just about the supplies and where I purchased those. Um, and so you can always refer to those. I'll link it at the end of this video and I'll also link those down below. First off, as usual, I recommend that you start off by printing out the color sampler before you decide to print your planner. The color sampler is available in the preview file and it is the first file in the folder when you do make your purchase. The reason why I recommend starting with the color sampler is because the colors on the screen and the colors printed will always look a little different. Also, the paper you choose and the printer that you use will affect how the colors appear when you print it out. For me, I'm using HP Premium 28 pound bright white paper. It's my go-to, it's super nice, it's super bright and the colors come out really nice on this paper. I'm also using an HP printer, so maybe that has something to do with it. But these are the two color themes for the planner this year. The example I'm gonna be showing you is using the Promise color palette. And the other color palette is Hope. I'm going with Promise this year just because I haven't had a rainbow planner in a couple years, so I figured I might wanna try going back to that. And then the Hope version is actually where this started because the inspiration behind the stripes was the typical kind of airmail stripes that you see on like old school letters where it's got that blue and red stripe that goes around. And that's why blue and red are kind of the primary colors in this color palette. So here is an example of the cover. Some of the versions have different types of alternating colors, while this version here has all of the colors in one. They'll all have the speech bubble in the corner. There's the version with the year already posted. There's also ones where the speech bubble is empty, so you can choose to label it however way you'd like. If you want to put your name, you can put your name, or use stickers to decorate that, you can totally do that. Now, typically, I would usually print the back cover version right back here, but I had some issues with my printer and with the pandemic and shipping being kind of delayed and whatnot, I was not able to print it on the back of this, but I'm thinking I might use this to put my post-it kind of dashboard here, and so it's fine that I don't have that printed. One thing to note is that all of my pages in my planner are made with the intention of some of the spacing being taken up by the disc bound punches. This also works for a typical three ring binder. So even with a page like this, I tried three hole punching it and you'll see that it didn't impact any of the print on the page and so you could either use a disc bound system, you can get it spirally bound at, at let's say like staples, or you can use just a three ring binder for this planner. It's up to you how you want to put it together. So to start off, we always start off with the A Random Hello logo and just a little bit of the About Me sections here. Now, honestly, I don't know about you, but I never lose my planner because it's such a precious thing to me. But this is more for my own record keeping so that I remember kind of where I was and what school I was at, what classes I was teaching during that year. So you'll see here there's information for your name, your email, your Twitter, or anything um, else. There's also a space for you to list the classes that you teach. And then there's some information about your school, your room number, and your phone extension, all of that. Next we have the emergency contacts list with two locations here for listing emergency contacts. I also have this section here which where you can list your teacher friends and mentors. And I don't refer to this section very much during the year, but I do really like kind of refilling this out every year to remind myself of the people that I am able to reach out to. So I have this quote in there all the time 
I really need to reach out to my mentors a bit more, but I do reach out to my teacher friends all the time. So an area just, I can't seem to take it out only because I think it's so valuable and just that reminder of those mentors that I have is always really encouraging. Over here, we have the academic school year kind of all in one. It starts from July 2020 to June 2021. Um, you can use this in however way you like. Um, I like to kind of highlight the days that I have off. Because <laughs> you know, teachers always count down to those days more than the students do, right? And I'll usually highlight those days. I might also highlight some key deadlines for yearbook or things like that. I do need to make better use of this, but I like having it available right here. Next is what I call kind of the year map section. So this is just important dates. So I have it listed starting from July. I know some planners start in January, which doesn't really make sense to me when it's an academic school year calendar planner of sorts. So mine starts in July, August, September, October, November, December, and then starts back up with January over here and goes till June. What I like to use this for is to actually list some major to-do items for those times of the month. And so I actually use this primarily for my yearbook planning. So things like making sure to do the sales push in September and then another sales push in January and things like that. I know some other teachers might use this to list your student birthdays. I teach high school and so it's kind of unrealistic for me to list them all out here because there's over 140 students every year, but you can use this in whatever way you want. Next is the curriculum mapping section. So here you'll have weeks one through 10, there's five days a week, all the way up to week 40. I actually pre-print my curriculum map from the previous year. So for instance, I teach integrated math level one, and so I taught that last year as well. And so what I'll do is I'll fill this out in advance with all of the things I did on whatever day of the week for that class. And then this year, as I'm teaching, I'll refer back to just see kind of where do I fit in terms of the big picture? Am I a little behind? Am I a little ahead? Um, are there things that I skipped last year that I kind of regret skipping? Or are there new things that I added that I wanna make sure that I do again this year? And so having this as a reference is really helpful. You can also use this kind of proactively, meaning like during the actual year. And you could also just use this to kind of pre like plan out kind of how you're gonna fit all of the content that you need to teach within the year that you have. Next are the logs. The first one here is for student accommodations. Personally, one page is not enough. So there are add-ons of every single one of these logs, starting from the curriculum map. All of these next few pages are available as add-ons in addition to the original file for the planner. So what I'm showing you now is what the original planner file has. However, you can always just go back in and print more of whatever section you need. And I have those available for all of the things leading up until right before June. So anything that I'm showing you now, you can also print your own extra copies to fit in um, for whatever you need. Also, if there are sections that you don't feel like you're going to use, with the disc bound system, what's really nice is that you can just remove those pages um, from your planner without having to do it. And if you change your mind, you can stick it back in. So first off, student accommodations. This information, as I hope you know, is confidential. So you should not leave this in the public eye. This is only for you to see. But what I like to do is I like to write the students' names and their classes and kind of just a really shorthand notes for what things I need to remember. For instance, do they have preferred seating? Do they get extra time on their tests? Things like that. And I just kind of bullet point it really small in this section here to just kind of have an overall view so that whenever I'm creating a new seating chart, I'll usually start here to see, okay, which of my students have to sit in the front or which of my students have to face, the front, have to face forward. All of those things I use pretty regularly. And so I like to have it in a really easy to find spot. As for medical information, again, this will just depend on your class. Sometimes I like to just write that within my accommodations list, but there are times when I've had students who have had different chronic illnesses that I needed to kind of be aware of and be mindful of, and so I would include that here. I also include information regarding allergies and things like that in this section as well. Next is the communication log. Now, 
You can use this again in a variety of ways. If you want to track all of your parent communication, you can go for good for you if you can do that. But for me, again, teaching high school and having over 140 students, it's going to take me way too long to log all the times I email parents. So what I use this section for instead is anytime I have a parent meeting, I take notes in here. So I'll log the date, the student name, what class they're in, and just some, again, bullet pointed notes about what we talked about in that meeting, what next steps we're taking, and whatnot. What I like to do here is I just like to use an opaque post-it and I cover up the names. And so that anytime I have another meeting, I don't have to like use a new page, but I can just continue writing. The parents might be able to see what I wrote over here, but they won't know who it's regarding. So it'll still keep those names confidential. Next is the behavior incidents log. Here we got student name, class, their behavior, and the action that was taken. Um, in the past, I haven't really used this section, but I do have a plan for it this year. This year was the first time I had to fill out what my school calls pre-referrals. And so I think this might be a good way for me to kind of remember, oh wait, these are the things that happened. I'll probably include like the date that it happened as well. And then I tend to not remember to fill out the pre-referrals the day that it happened, but maybe I can kind of log them as they go. And then on the weekend, I can check back and be like, oh wait, was there anything I needed to go back and log? Um, so I'm gonna be using it in that way. Here we have extended student absences. Um, this was something that I felt was more helpful for me when I taught middle school. But again, with the number of students I have now, it's kind of hard for me to log it. But you could log the student names, the class, their date of absences, and any notes that you might have. So if your school requires that you provide some sort of independent study, then maybe you can log kind of what topics that they're covering, when the due dates are for them, and things like that here. All right, teacher expense log. Again, I have this every year. Hopefully, well, let's just say realistically, we probably do spend more than what is available here. But if you have certain things where you are able to be reimbursed or that you're required to purchase for your work, it might be good to just kind of log it all in one place. So here I have a space for the date, the items, the cost, and then there's a check mark. You can use this however way you want to. I'm thinking for myself this year, um, with yearbook, there's a few things that I would like to purchase for the class, like a new camera and some more um, extra batteries for their camera. So I'm thinking I might just list the items that are kind of on my teacher wish list for the for the class, and then maybe put a check mark either when I make the purchase or when I'm given the funds to purchase those things, hopefully, um, and keeping log in that way. Or even if you are a donors choose teacher and you have a project in mind, you can kind of start listing out what those items that you need are and the costs. And then maybe once you put it onto donors choose, you can then move on to the next section and so on. Um, another page I have is the professional development section. I know for some schools in particular states or counties, you have to report all of your professional development each year. Um, personally, I don't have to report professional development. I actually probably go to more professional development than my school would like me to do. Um, but I've got a place to put the date, the name of the event, the location, the cost, and again, a check mark for you to use it in whichever way you want to. And then lastly is the movies, music, and shows. This is more for fun. I really love television and movies and theater and so, um, this is just a place where I like to log some of those media things that I've participated in during the year. Um, I think it's always fun to look back to see what was popular during the year that my planner might be from. So for instance, right now, I know Tiger King is really popular. I don't have Netflix, so I haven't watched it, but you know, that's a very current thing that I feel like just even a year from now, it would be something we would laugh about. So that's what you can use this for. So again, anything from the curriculum map all the way through to this section, if you want more pages of them added, you can look in the add-on files and print as many of those pages as you want. Again, you can also skip some of these pages if you know that you won't be using them, um, but they are available to you. And now let's head into the months. So here is June. So this planner begins June 2020 
and monthly wise it goes all the way through to July 2021 so it's a 14 month planner however for July of 2021 it does not include the weekly but for every other month during the year it does include the weekly spreads so here is just a typical monthly layout this is generally how I like for the month to look I try not to have a really big header up top just so that I can really maximize the space for these boxes here. You'll notice that there are faint lines for these boxes to help you kind of write straight. I do like to keep my lines rather thin because I have really small handwriting and so again you can really pack in a lot of information if you write small. I have the weekends highlighted with the color of the month so for June although there is an alternating color up here the actual weeks will have one color that's the feature color so in this month the feature color is green and again I showed the entire week including the weekends if you are using the Bible verse version there is going to be a Bible verse each month right up here and Along the right side for any of the versions, there's a large note section and then a preview of the following month. I don't put the previous month only because I tend not to look backwards when I'm planning. I usually look forward and so I only include the next upcoming month, not the month before. Here is the weekly layout. I've gone back to only offering one weekly layout. The reason for that is because, again, from the feedback I heard, pretty much anyone that I know who uses my planner uses this layout. And so in order to streamline my planner making process, I kind of minimize the amount of versions of things I'm making so that I can make those versions really well. Last year, I had a small color bar going along the bottom with the tri triangle design. I tried putting in that stripe pattern, diagonal stripe pattern along the bottom and it just wasn't looking right no matter what I did and I realized there's no need for me to just be frustrated by that so I just took it out. Um, the flag design in the corners you might recognize is the same as what it was two years ago. I just really liked that design and how clear, how clean that little flag look was and so I've gone back to that design here. And I didn't put any color, again, in any of the other sections. Everything else in these pages is gray, and there's not really any wasted space. There's no empty spaces between the columns or things like that. It's very much really maximizing all of the space on the page. So it's actually really minimalistic if you look at it now. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, I like to use a lot of Happy Planner stickers and washi tape, and so I really left the page open for you to decorate with whatever you want to. And I tried to minimize how many colors were on the page so that if you do use stickers with color in mind that there's not a lot of clashing. So again, lots of space for you to customize. I personally like to put the washi either right here, right above the checklist along the bottom or right here as well. The reason for the way that this layout is, is that I teach a block schedule, which means I teach my students every other day. And I also have two different classes that I teach. I teach Integrated Math 1 for high school, and I teach the yearbook class as well. So what I do is, since I teach them every other day, in the main kind of line section here is where I write down the scheduled agenda for those classes. So I'll just list it every other day. So maybe even though I teach both of them on the first days of the week, I would put maybe the math agenda here and the yearbook agenda here, the math agenda here, yearbook agenda here, and so on. And so that's kind of what I use the main section for. The top section up here, I'll log any school events or meetings that I have, maybe student birthdays if I really want to be extra. But this is just a little bit more of like a note something special for that day, anything like that goes up here. And then of course my signature checklist on the bottom because I've seen planners where there's just one running checklist on the side and there's never enough boxes for me. I have to write down everything because I can never remember what my plan was. And so I write down all of my checklists for each day here. And typically by the end of the first half of the week, 
I'll go back and anything I didn't reach during those first three days, I'll tag them in here so that I can take care of those things over the weekend. I've also kind of simplified this right side column here. I've increased the size of the Saturday and Sunday blocks because I've always mentioned that it's a little small, so I just changed it this year and made them a little bigger. They are smaller than the rest of the page, of course, but I've kind of made sure to include the weekends because there are always weekend things for work. And also, if you, like me, use this planner not only for teaching, but also for just your life planner, um, you might need those larger sections as well. Down here, this space is left open for you to use it in whatever way you want to. For me, I primarily use this to decorate it with stickers and any quotes and whatnot um, because most of the checklist things I do here. So any encouraging things, anything cute or pretty I like to put here. Um, if I have any movie tickets or concert tickets or things like that, I might attach them here as well. So I'm gonna go through the different months. They just keep alternating, but I'm gonna start with December. So again, this is the blue-green month, but it is a green month, so the weekly spreads are in green. Next we have the blue month, which has a blue and purple alternating stripes. The purple month has pink and purple alternating stripes. The pink month has pink and orange. The orange month has orange and yellow. Next we have yellow and green. And then it goes back to green again and starts all over. Now I'm gonna switch over now over to this page. This is the ideas for next page section. And I've been using this more and more every year. So typically I had this at the very end of the planner, but I decided to move it up just right behind July so that any time I need to plan some ideas for things I want to make sure to change next year, um, things I want to remember next year, um, I log it in here. So this is split up kind of in quadrants of sorts here with different lines so you can kind of parse out your ideas based on topic or things like that. And again, these are available in the add-ons, so if you want more of them, you can print more. And then we go into the student checklist section. So there are, I believe, 20 pages, so 10 sets of spreads included in the original planner document. Each checklist goes all the way up to 36 students, and there are 15 columns for each page. I include the same kind of listing on both sides that for those of you whose rosters don't change very much you could actually just cut along that line there and it'll line up without having to rewrite the names every time for me my rosters change fairly frequently and so I end up just um, reprinting the student list each time I have included an editable version of the checklist so that for those of you who want to type your the names in you can and I've also changed it up here so that there's some space for you to label kind of what this section is for. So maybe you can put the class name or maybe the, the grading period or something like that up here. And hopefully you don't have more than 36 students. Um, but yes, that's what I use this for. And then lastly is the notes section. So this is again my signature grid notes page with the quadrant lines. So it's got a little colorful tab up here so you can kind of label what's the main topic of those notes, whether it's just general staff meetings or maybe if you attend a conference, you can label that there. And it's split up into four. It's kind of faint here, but you can see that there's a quadrant line and it's grid. I love grid notes more than just plain lines, mainly because um, one, I'm a math teacher, so sometimes I just need some graph paper but also just because I can really section out my notes if I know I'm gonna be taking a bit longer notes I might just go down and fill a whole column um, sometimes I might even fill it out this way or if it's just a typical weekly staff meeting then usually one quor quarter is more than enough for the notes there so I feel like I can really maximize the pages by having the sections broken up in this way there are 20 pages included 
in the original planner document. And again, there's an add-on for you to print more uh, notes pages to add into your planner as well. So that is all for this planner. Now some additional documents that are included are the different versions of the tabs for you to print for yourself. These are the Avery insertable tabs um, that I use every year. And so the document includes the tab labels that fit this exactly. This year I'm also including kind of a page of the important dates. I typically used to print these directly in the monthly spreads, but I really like using stickers and so I ended up not really using them. Or I had some people who were buying my planner who weren't living in the States and so having kind of Independence Day on July 4th didn't make sense for them because they weren't American. So this did not print properly, but the version that I'm including will match the color theme of the pages here. But what I've done is I've included quite a bit more different religious holidays. Um, again, it's not going to print like this. It'll print properly in the actual file. I was just running out of ink. But um, the way I did it is so that if you cut this out, you can directly leave it right above the current spot and it'll replace it with the correct sizing. And the color will match the month that it goes into for the font. Now, if you don't want to, you could just cut off the, the date number and just take that and stick that in as well. It's up to you. So if you're like me, you might print it on some sticker paper and just cut it out. Or you can just print it on regular paper and just good, use some good old um, scissors and glue and you can use that as well. I hope you enjoyed this teacher planner walkthrough and um, let me know if you have any feedback for things that I can change or improve. I will be releasing a calendar year version of this planner later this year. So for those of you who live in countries where your school year doesn't start in August like most of ours in the States do, um, you will have an option to purchase a calendar year version of this planner which will start from December of 2020 and go until December of 2021. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be working on that during the summer. But if you would like to purchase this planner, again, it is available on Teachers Pay Teachers. It'll be going up on that website on May 15th, 2020. And thank you for all of your support. If you have any questions about how to put your planner together, again, I am going to be including the links for everything in this planner down below. I'm also going to include the video clips of both me putting together my planner from two years ago and the kind of supply haul that I did last year. So thank you so much for all of your support and I hope you enjoy this planner if you get one and let me know how it goes. If you'd like to stay updated for anything that might happen with this planner release or any other videos I might be posting, please subscribe to this channel here or you can follow me on Instagram at a random hello. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.